So a company called MakeBlock sent me their new Xtool D1 laser engraver slash cutter, and I'm going to check it out and see what it can do. So let's get started. So when it comes to packaging, it's actually in a relatively small box for what you're going to be building, which means that everything's going to be packed in here relatively tight. As you can see, there's a quick start guide on top, but there is no physical instructions on how to assemble this, so you have to do everything online. And you also get a small sheet of stickers. When it comes to the actual packaging, it's in here with this nice black foam, and as you can see, everything is really tightly packed. And here's the bag of all the tools and the screws that you need to assemble this, along with some extra pieces and some test materials. Unpacking this is pretty straightforward, just take all the foam out that contains all of your pieces. I was really surprised by the finish of the metal. It's a lot higher quality than I thought it was going to be for some reason. I know this is more of an aesthetic thing and doesn't really matter for the functionality, but I just thought I would mention it. So I'll spare you the time of me pulling everything out of the foam, but here's all the pieces, and here's the most important part, which is the actual 10 watt laser module. You can see that it has a large fan on top, along with a pretty decent sized heatsink. And this is because this module has two lasers in it that are both 5 watts each, that combine to make a 10 watt laser. It also has this nice acrylic shield to help protect your eyes from the laser beam, but you should still wear the protective goggles around this. They also included a rotary roller with this, so I can engrave on cylinders, so we'll check that out later too. But first I need to assemble everything, and that should be done in just a snap. And there we go, and it was actually really easy to assemble. So first thing first, I'm going to do a test cut on some cardboard, but you can see that it won't fit underneath the laser, because you have to adjust it. Luckily they already thought of this and put in a little arm on the side, so you just flip this down and put it up against whatever you're going to engrave on, and then tighten down the little screw on the other side, and everything will be in focus and exactly where you need it. And this really takes out all the guesswork of trying to focus your laser. And now I can finally turn it on, and you can see that there is a red cross on here. This is going to help you align your laser with where you're going to be engraving. So I'm just going to use some simple text to do an engraving to make sure everything is working properly. Also, this is sped up, and it actually took about a minute and a half to engrave this. And here it is, and this came out really crisp. I was not expecting it to be this clean. In the past, I've used other diode lasers, and they've been so disappointing, mostly because they're just extremely slow, and they don't get the best details all the time. As an example, this shark took almost five hours to be engraved, using a 3D printer that had a laser attachment. So now let's do some cutting, but there's a problem with that. So once the laser goes through the material I'm cutting, it's going to cut whatever's underneath, which happens to be my table, and I don't want that. Like on my CO2 laser cutter, it has this nice mesh bed, so it doesn't cut anything underneath it, and it keeps everything suspended in the air. So I'm just going to put down a cutting mat and see if that helps. If it's too much and it burns through it, then we'll switch to something else later. Or I'll just have to raise the piece up that I'm cutting out. So this is going to engrave the text again, and then it'll go along the outside and cut it out. And there we go, it looks like it cut out cleanly in one pass, but it also went directly through this into my cutting mat and pretty much ruined that area, but it's fine. But this isn't meant to just be used on cardboard, so let's check out some of the other stuff it supplied, like the little dog tag made out of stainless steel. So as it was engraving on the dog tag, it seemed to heat it up and it made the mat raise and the focus of the laser was way off, but it's still technically finished and it looks good enough for my own dog. And next I'm going to put a honeycomb pattern onto this piece of leather that came with it. And it looks like it came out really nice. And if you're wondering where I'm getting all these patterns from, I'm just making them all using Illustrator. Or you can use Inkscape. And if you don't know how to use either one of those programs, you can learn. But with that said, you can also import image files that you find online, or even photos that you've taken. Just like the snowflakes that I'm using for this ornament. And there are two programs you can use for this particular laser. One of them is actually made by the makers of this laser. It's called Laserbox Basic. And this is a free program, and I've been actually using this for everything that I've been showing in this video so far. And there's also another program called Lightburn, which is a way more advanced program that you can do a lot more with, but is a lot more complicated, and costs about $60. But it also works with a large variety of other laser cutters. And since we're on the topic about cutting with the laser, I'm going to cut a 4mm hole through this 3mm piece of wood. And this is going to show some of the problems with the diode lasers, mostly because they don't have an air assist. And basically what that does is it blows all the smoke away along with keeping flare-ups from happening. So you can catch stuff on fire with this pretty easily, especially in a small circle like this. So I stopped it a little bit early, but it was supposed to do 10 passes. 
And as you can see, it's pretty charred, but it almost made it all the way through. And this is a pretty thick piece of wood for this type of laser. And with a razor, I just cut the little connecting points on the back and everything fell out. So I have a complete hole through this now. This is also an open frame laser. So all of the smoke is just going out into your room. I really suggest getting some sort of ventilation or make sure you're in a really well ventilated area. But now I can check out the rotary roller and see how well this can engrave into glass. You do have to make this a little bit taller so everything fits, so they supply some little extension feet, but I only got half the amount that I was supposed to get. So to make up for that, I'll just put little boxes under it and it should work. When it comes to the glass, I'm going to be using a old wine bottle that has spray paint on it. That way the laser has something to actually hit. And you could do a similar thing on other materials like metal. If it has a painted coating on it, you could burn that off and it'll just leave bare metal and then the rest of it will be painted. And if you're wondering, this took 18 minutes to engrave this into the glass. And from the looks of it, it came out pretty good. But I do need to get all this paint off now using some acetone. And there we go. It doesn't come up on camera too well due to all the reflections. And I realized that this is upside down. But for a test, this worked out perfectly. So there's a ton of applications you can use one of these for to customize things or to just make your own products or packaging. And of course, there's a learning curve to this, just like most things, along with a lot of testing to make sure everything's going to turn out how you want it and your materials are going to react how you want them to. And like I said at the beginning of this video, this was sent to me free of charge, but I wasn't paid anything to say anything nice about it. Everything I said in this video are my own thoughts and opinions. But to sum up everything about it, is it the best laser that I've ever used? No but it is a thousand times better than the other diode lasers I've used because I'm comparing it to a CO2 laser, which is much more powerful, but also much more expensive. From what I've seen with this one, it does a really good job at engraving and it does it relatively quick. And the fact that it can cut through things like wood is a major plus. Also, the free software that this comes with will be more than enough for most people, and it has the option to upgrade to Lightburn, like I said, which gives you a ton more options and flexibility with this machine. So if you're interested in getting one of these or some of the other materials and ventilation setup that I used, I'll have links to everything down in the description below. And so you know, there are four different kit options for this particular laser. So what you need will be totally up to you. But anyways, if you found this video helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.